Hey, my name is Steven. I am a graphic designer who focuses on editorial and packaging design. And finally, I am getting to reviewing Red Velvet's Feel My Rhythm album. I've already done the ASMR unboxing, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description below. The latest edition of the Revy Festival series is Red Velvet's The Revy Festival 2022. In 2019, they released a three-part series, the Revy Festival Day 1, the Revy Festival Day 2, and finally the Revy Festival finale. And during a press conference for the album, Red Velvet describes their new release as similar to how the cherry blossom season signifies new beginnings, we, as Red Velvet, are poised for a fresh start. Wendy explained, traditionally, they've released lively and powerful summer songs like Red Flavor, Due to the Scorching Heat, However, the spring season inspired us with the idea of something new, a fresh start. This time, we wanted to capture the heart-fluttering emotions associated with spring. The single, Feel My Rhythm, is a pop dance track that incorporates a sample of Bach's Air on the G-String. It showcases a delicate and elegant string melody, an intense trap beat, and the captivating vocal charms of the group. The lyrics dynamically unfold a journey of enjoying freedom across time and space, doubling the conceptual allure of Red Velvet. As the central theme of the Revy Festival series revolves around traveling through imagination, we thought it would be fitting to welcome the spring season with this song. Its refreshing quality also makes it ideal fit for our main track. Classical music is widely recognized, so we believe it can pique people's interest when they hear our songs. So I acquired the Orgel version of the Feel My Rhythm album. When I was ready to make my purchase for the album, I, of course, am always in awe with Red Velvet's concepts and their ability to transform their packaging design to really push the concept of their albums. So when I saw the Orgel version, I was like, yeah, this is it. We're going to get this one. And what really drew me to this packaging was its resemblance to a music box. And I thought, oh, what a great connection to using classical music, box music, and also the aesthetics that they went for in the music video and relate that to a music box. And with this release, I say it time and time again, but Red Velvet and SM really know how to push the boundaries when it comes to their packaging. And it really influences the market at large, especially for other groups. The outer box design elements are gorgeous. They feature a really beautiful color palette that features a baby doll pink and gold accents. This really exudes femininity as well as delicacy. The ornate and delicate Baroque illustrations on the front really complement the overall design aesthetics. And what I really like about the application here, particularly with the foiling, is that really adds some texture to what could be a really flat design, especially if they just chose like a flat gold. The addition of the treatment to the gold, specifically the folding, really adds this sense of luxury. And not only that, it really creates this multi-dimensional effect and adds a lot of texture to the design, which if they hadn't done this and they went for just a flat gold, it really could have left the album feeling a bit lackluster. The display font chosen acts as an extension of the overall tone and theme of the album. They went for a very beautiful script that really speaks to that kind of Baroque and music box feel, and this really enhances the overall design of the album. Now, due to the size of the album, there are some elements within it that had to be compromised. You know, we can't go overboard with certain treatments and certain design approaches because there's just not a lot of space. So I really enjoy that they focused the uh, treatments, specifically the illustrations, the foiling, and the use of typography mainly to the outer box. This really helps to elevate the album. And again, because of the sizing, there's limitations to what they could do. The editorial flipbook, while straightforward and acceptable, I think could have benefited from a softer contrast, perhaps more of a deep navy tone or a deeper tone of that pink to maintain consistency 
with the color palettes throughout the rest of the album. Now, with Red Velvet's concepts, you are always going to get something dark contrasted against something beautiful and delicate and usually feminine. And maybe the use of the black really signifies that more darker tone, that darker energy, something sinister. The music video references Bosch paintings, and if you know anything about these, they are overtly complicated, but there's something very dark and sinister about them while also being ornate and beautiful. And maybe that's what they were going with here and why they chose to do a lot of black within the editorial flipbook. Maybe also part of the reason why they chose to do black was just to provide some variety and some textural differences. You know, most K-pop album flipbooks have a range of editorials. You have something that is cute, something that is formal, something that is dark, you know, whatever. There's always going to be a lot of contrast through them. And there is typically at least two to three to four different editorials, depending on, you know, the group and the budget. The tracklist flipbook, however, does impress me with its orderly and formal grid layout. They incorporate sheet music into the design that really helps push this kind of music box feel. However, a shift from that stark white to more of that beige color in the CD sleeve would have provided a level of continuity with the rest of the album designs. When I am designing, I am someone that is very against using stark white, um, unless it's something very corporate and very formal. But this concept has so much liveliness in it that a stark white really doesn't fit in. And that's why I really enjoy the addition of the beige. And I wish that that was continued on in um, the other flipbook as well. The extension of the sheet music graphic onto the CD sleeve is a really nice touch. It provides a level of movement and rhythm that helps you get through the different various pieces of media here. And as I mentioned about the use of stark white, I really love the use of the warm beige with the black here. I think that that is more warm, it's more lively, and there's something really delicate about that in contrast to the flipbook that uses that stark white. Most K-pop albums nowadays have a lot of inclusions, and I think something that is pretty consistent now is the addition of stickers in the book. Now, these aren't really appealing to me, but I do understand that for some K-pop fans who are maybe a little bit more creative and like to DIY their albums, especially if you get multiple versions, these inclusions are really cute. I think that they stick to the theme. And when I think about it, I never had a music box growing up. I don't even know if my sister did, but I would imagine a young person, a young child would probably use stickers to decorate maybe their mom's music box. So I'm kind of thinking about it that way. And I do like these. I think that they fit in with the theme and the overall design aesthetic. A particularly charming feature of the packaging design, and really the reason why I got this, is the feature of the pop-up design of each member that's dressed as a ballerina, which resembles a music box. For my version, I got Joy. And this was such a nice touch and really a unique design. And for collectors out there, having this on your shelf open is so cute. Uh, I have it on my shelf out in my living room and I try and keep it open as much as I can. The only thing that I wish is I almost wish that the box itself, the lid, would fold a little bit more, like all the way back. I don't wanna push it because I don't wanna break it, but I, I don't know, I, I kind of would, because it's a little bit awkward <laughs> when you're, um, you know, displaying it, but it's definitely not a deal breaker for me. It's still very beautiful and delicate. I haven't touched on the photography pieces yet. With most Red Velvet albums, the quality of editorials are always outstanding. And for Feel My Rhythm, it is no exception. I always love Red Velvet's ability to elevate what they're doing 
and especially with being able to connect their concepts and themes together. So we have a lot of different varieties when it comes to the albums. Um, we have this very storybook, music box, uh, editorials that are very ornate and detailed, especially with the stage production. Then we get into some of the more, I would kind of consider them Renaissance painting um, editorials. Again, really beautiful stage productions. And the quality of these are just, again, so outstanding. Uh, it is a little unfortunate that for the Orgel version, we have such small images. Uh, I wish that there was uh, a poster inclusion in this. I really, really, really would have loved to have a full image of the, the members uh, as ballerinas or in one of the gardens. But I digress. The editorials are still very beautiful, regardless of the size. So in conclusion, the packaging design masterfully reflects the album's tone and messaging. And this album stands out amongst the very standard and basic album designs of today. Its uniqueness adds value to the overall experience, making it a noteworthy addition to any collection. That is it for today's review. I do apologize that it is a little bit short, but because of the size of the album and the packaging, there's only so much that I can talk about. And really some of the bigger highlights here is the use of color, the actual physical box, and some of the graphic elements like the sheet music. Again, I do wanna mention that I do have the ASMR unboxing that I posted weeks ago. If you do wanna check that out, I will link it below. I also wanna remind everyone that I am on other social medias. I am on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, and I will have those linked below if you want to check me out on there. I do other album reviews, other unboxings, and I'm really wanting to ramp up a lot of my reviews this year. Album buying in Canada is very expensive. I am unable currently to make purchases in order to get these albums. So I'm thinking that moving forward, I'm probably going to be doing like first impression reviews for new releases. I will source out quality images of unboxings and review them based off of those images. I really want to do this. I would love to be able to have the physical albums to, to unbox them, but right now it's just not financially available to me. But if you do want to support me, I am on Ko-fi, which is a creator platform to monetarily support creators that you enjoy. I will have that link below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. I did just want to mention that my next album review is going to be a 17 album. So look out for that unboxing and the review coming up in the next few weeks. Bye!